my first blog about calamity, sinabi ko doon that one of the most important thing I learned in business is that everything in life goes on a cycle of boom and bust, of famine and abundance. To put it in a simple way, ang sinasabi ko, kailangan mo maintindihan, calamities will come. Yet sa dami ng nangyayaring calamity sa mundo in the past few months, most people choose to ignore this truth. Siguro feeling ng karamihang negosyo that if they always think about calamity lang, they will paralyze themselves, they will become, they will look weak. They, when most people in business want to be in control. So, when they make plans, most of the time, they do not think about mga calamity na mangyayari. You know, when, we were, when I was in HP, we would have a contingency plan, pero the plan was really for growth. Because we feel in business, that is what we should focus on, growth and not calamity. Ako, one of the most important thing I learned in business is that calamities will come. Alam mo, the wisest man in history, si Solomon, even warned us in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 2. Sabi niya, Give a portion to seven or even to eight, for you do not know what disaster may happen on the earth. Sabi niya, disaster will come. Sa financial industry, normally you talk about using this idea to diversify or to spread out your investment. Ako naman, because I'm a businessman, ang pick-up ko dyan is, dong ingat ka because calamities will come and hindi mo alam saan siya nang gagaling. I'm a person who do not diversify immediately. I believe in diversification, but I also say diversify in the proper time. But ang biggest take out, ang biggest take out ko sa Ecclesiastes 11 verse 2, which has helped my business, is to realize that calamities will come. Was Solomon a weak businessman kaya niya sinabi to? No. He was one of the best. Do you know that Solomon was not only king of Israel during his time? Bible says he was king over a region and there were other kings who wanted to be under him because he was good. He was a very good businessman. Okay, he was able to make a lot of people rich and yet sabi niya, "Be careful because calamities will come." I have learned that accepting the fact that calamities will come is not a show of weakness, but of meekness. To be meek does not mean you are weak. To be meek is just to recognize that there are things we cannot control or we cannot change. That many things in nature are, needs to be respected. So we need to work around it, uh, we need to work around them not against them. So when I make plans today, I consider the possible calami calamities that will come and use them to prosper the business. Pwede ba yun? Can you really use calamity to prosper a business? I develop my approach from the things I learned from some of the great men in the Bible who went through calamities. And these men were able to prosper in the middle of great famine. You know, the Bible will show you that almost all the great men of faith went through great calamities. But the great stories that I learned from was Genesis 12, when Abraham experienced severe calamity. In Genesis 26, when his son experienced another, calam another, another great famine. But the greatest famine the Bible talks about was experienced by a man named Joseph. And I guess you know that, di ba? Seven years of abundance came. After that, seven years of famine came after. And yet, Joseph was able to make Egypt richer when the calamity came. So from this story, I was able to develop strategies in my business, which I hope I can share with you in the next few blog. And on Totoho, we have been growing only because we are good in surviving calamities. Let me share with you some of the things I discovered in, those, in the story of Abraham, Isaac, and Joseph. When a severe famine came during the time of Abraham, 
God told Abraham to go to Egypt to take refuge. However, when that happened to Solomon, sabi ni God, you stay put. You stay where I want you to stay. And, he, uh, and God asked him to stay in, in Philistine, in the land of their enemies. And then kay Joseph naman, when the, when, when the famine was finally over, in Genesis 50, you know Joseph made a conclusion. Sabi niya, that he, he, told, he was telling his brothers that he realized that the reason why he was in Egypt because God sent him there so that he can save many lives, including the lives of his family. Let me briefly show you how Isaac and Joseph prospered while they were in the middle of great famine. If you have a pen, you may want to Take note of the verses that I will share with you uh, so that you can read them for yourself. So that you can check kung totoo sinasabi ko. In Genesis 26, when everyone was moving to Egypt to take refuge, God told Isaac to stay. And he asked them to stay in the land of their enemies, the Philistines. Let me just clear this. Iba ang Philistine sa Palestine. Palestine is a region that the British created when they were ruling the Middle East. Philistine naman in the Bible is a nation, kalaban niya ng Israel. So, those are two different things. Okay? When God asked Isaac to stay in Philistine, there was also oppression from the local people because dayo siya. And yet, the Bible tells us that he prospered. Paano siya mag-prosper? In Genesis 26, verses 12 to 13, sabi doon, And Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfolds. The Lord blessed him. And the, men and the man became rich and gained more and more until he became very wealthy. Take note of what it said. Isaac sowed in the land. Where did he sow? In the land of famine. Because he sowed and worked, he was able to reap. And then sabi niya, because of his work, God blessed him. How did God bless him? God blessed him because he worked eh. While the, Palesti while the rest of the Palestinian nation then was paralyzed because of famine, Isaac continued to work hard. He was able to create an opportunity for himself. What opportunity was that? You see, kakain pa rin yung mga tao na sa Palestine noon eh. Sino papakain sa kanila? Sino nagtanim? So si Joseph was, ah, si, sorry, si Isaac was able to prosper because in the midst of, of or in the middle of a calamity, opportunity still exists. And that is one of the things I will share with you in, 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 a, in a future blog. Parang kami, you know, kami, we are badly hit by the lockdown of Cagayan and Bukidnon. And all of a sudden, we lost our market sa mga restaurants na we serve. We also lost the market ng mga traders who would resell our vegetables. However, when we met, we asked ourselves, what opportunity did this crisis create? And we did find one. We did fine, and today it is helping us to survive. And I'll share this with you in my in in, in another blog. Do naman sa story ni Joseph. Genesis forty to fifty talk about the great famine in Egypt, and it was revealed to Pharaoh and to Joseph. God told Joseph that seven years of famine will come. However, sinabihan rin niya si Joseph, but seven years of abundance will come first. So do you know how Joseph made Egypt richer during times of famine? Joseph worked hard in the time of abundance and saved a lot so that he would be ready for the famine. Egypt became richer when the famine came because, of the, because the rest of the world did not prepare for it. In fact, during the time of famine, Pharaoh got to own the whole of Egypt. Bakit? The Egyptians did not prepare eh? so they had to sell their land for food and I realized that Egypt won over the world not through military might 
but by just being prepared in the time of famine. Because sila lang ang may pagkain, they, they brought everybody under subjection because of food. Kami sa Moriah Farms, we have been growing only because we survive calamities. When we get a chance to learn how to survive to calamities, when the abundance comes, we are always prepared. And yan ang kwento namin. I hope in the next few blogs I can share the things that we've learned para matulungan din kayo so that we can take advantage of the calamity we are in. If you like what you are learning, if you'd like to learn more, subscribe to this channel. But more than that, can you share this blog to your friends? Baka matulungan natin sila. Whether you're an OFW or you're a Filipino here in the Philippines, all of us can take advantage of this crisis. And all of us can learn and prosper through them. So I hope to see you in the next blog.